What's up, good people? It's your boy, Leroy McKenzie Jr., the Impact Builder. It's another episode of the Author Showcase brought to you by the National Community, the National Black Community News Newspaper, as y'all can see right there, and JNF Enterprises. Yes, I am rocking the Ravens game mm -hmm. tonight. They about to go eat uh, down in Miami tonight. So <laughs> they down in South Beach, they down in near, uh, they down in near you, Catherine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we want to welcome y'all to another episode of the uh, the author showcase where, where we bring you some of the, the nations and, and just global uh, countries, writers, authors, um, just some great auteurs of literature. It's just been phenomenal to be able to bring you some of these people to give you the, give them the platform to be able to talk about their books that they have, uh, to talk about their missions, their messages, the movements that they've been a part of, uh, and their motivation. What makes them um, what makes them go? What keeps them going? What motivates them to write the book? And tonight is no different. We're going to be talking about all of those things. Uh, and, and tonight I have a, a special guest with me uh, that she will be introducing herself in, in a, another couple of seconds and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad she uh, she has joined us in the Author Showcase or with the Author Showcase. I can't wait for y'all to, to talk to and hear about the great things that she has going on. She has a phenomenal book, but just more than more than just the book. And that's what um, this uh, conversations with authors is about. It's more than than just about their books. It's about um, you know who they are as people, um, who they the impact that they're having, uh, and just the different things that they're involved in. Um, I'm going to say a little bit, but then I'm going to let her introduce herself, and then we're going to get into our conversation. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, folks to Ms. Catherine Trotter. She's an entrepreneur. She's an entrepreneur. She's a motivational speaker. She's a community activist. Um, let me see. What, what else? What else do I need to put on, on that list? Change agent. <laughs> exactly. Change agent. Absolutely. Change agent. And, and I can't wait for you all just to, for those that haven't met her, um, but for those to, to um, get to know who she is. Um, Catherine, thank you for, for tuning. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. And I want you to just tell, tell, introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about who you are. First, I just want to say thank you, Leroy. You've always been a, a supporter of everything that I've done from community outreach to my book. So I just want to say first, thank you and uh, thank this platform for even allowing me to be on tonight. Um, even the previous night that we were together on Tuesday, yeah. I had an opportunity to meet some of the other leaders, uh, a, a part of this phenomenal gathering of black business owners, black authors, right? And so a little bit about myself, I started my journey um, into writing, actually it was in 2014. Um, my first book that I published is Community Engagement right. from Concept to Implementation, Eight Steps to Unlocking Your Creative Ideas. Why did I write this book? There were a lot of leaders that was coming to me and had questions around strategic planning in organizational development. And so I put it into eight steps that if someone takes the book, they can process it and implement it and immediately go into action. So a little bit about my history as to why this book is significant is because my start, I was a youth coordinator in Baltimore City. I, you know, out of college, I went to Morgan State University, majoring in political science. And my heart immediately after coming out of college was community work. So I was a youth coordinator, community organizer, um, I did some work around community-led um, um, poisoning that's going on that has happened in the city. And we did a lot of things around lead abatement and education with families. So my journey started with as a community organizer. So for me to write this first book, it was very natural for me. It was all of the things that I already was doing in the community as far as identifying an issue in the community and identifying what the solution is. And that's what the eight steps is about. It's about taking the issue that we see um, in a community setting, but identifying the solution and then creating those action steps. So my history and my background, I am a strategist. That's what I do. I take problems and we create solutions out of those problems. I love that. I love that. I love that. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you this. What got you, what got you started writing? What made you 
want to put pen to paper for that for the first book that you that you that you mm-hmm. wrote? really because of the need and the ask that was coming my way because a lot of people was asking me for a system or some type of roadmap of execution and for me it just comes very natural when it comes to to strategic planning um and so I was always taught that if you're trying to you know pass or pay it forward you you should really put it in a book take the knowledge and put it in a book that way you can pay it forward and so the reason why I wanted to do it is because I wanted to do simply just that I wanted to take the knowledge that I had and pay it forward to other community leaders in the community. So that was the the baseline as to why I even wrote my first book. Um, Now, the reason why I wrote my second book, which is called Metamorphosis Shadow, this book right here, it deals with coming out of the shadows of your past and walking into your destiny. This book is a little more personal where I uh, take very different concepts or, and put it into really a storyline. I don't know if anybody ever remember this. It's an old, old movie. And it was called The Never Ending Story. And I, I always remember that movie from when I was a child. And it was as if when you were reading that book, you were into the storyline. So I wrote this book, Metamorphosis Shadow, in such mm-hmm. of a way, when a person read this book, you don't see me, you see yourself in the book. The, the main character in the book is called Destiny. And so anyone that picks up this book, you're going to unlock places of your life for you to walk into and flow into your destiny. And I wrote this book because I needed to unlock some things in myself. I was wearing a mask for many years. It was different things going on growing up. And it was just a lot of things that I had to morph and shape and just be multiple things in multiple categories. And I had to learn how to take all those masks off and just be Catherine and be okay with it. And so that was the reason why I wrote this book. And I wanted to help unlock other doors for other individuals that wanted to walk into their purpose, but it's hard to walk in your purpose if you're wearing multiple masks. And so that was the reason why I wrote the second book. Ooh, say, hold up. You just said something right there. I want you to say that again, very slowly so people can get it. You said it's hard for you to walk in your purpose if what? It's hard for you to walk into your purpose if you're wearing multiple masks. Mm, okay, you're going to you're gonna have to talk a little bit more about that, about that yeah. right there. You know, yes. Um, yeah. Give, give me a little more with, with, with that right there. So, so like in wearing multiple masks, like for myself, you know, just being transparent, you know, we, we grew up in church. So there's a mask when you go to church, there's a mask when you come home, there's a mask when you're at school, there's all these different masks. There's masks when you're in different social settings, right? Um, having to be the perfect one or that leader or having to always meet the mark when you're you in reality, you're not that perfect being. You have flaws, you have failures, you have struggles, you have weaknesses. And I think a lot of times in society, um, if you don't put on a mask, people think that something is wrong when in in fact, no one's perfect. No one is wrapped tight. No one is batting a hundred, right? And so when we develop that mindset that we have to be all these different persons in different situations, we actually lose ourselves and we don't tap into who we are authentically. And so you can't, reason why I say you can't walk into your destiny if you're wearing multiple masks, because you're not being truthful. It, you, you're not even, okay, you remember that old movie with, what was it, Jim Carrey with the mask? Remember he had the, the yeah. mask? Yeah. Remember, okay. Uh-huh. So, so, and, and in that storyline, even with the lady that he liked in the movie, he felt he could only win her over if he transformed into the mask. Right. You know what I mean? But in right. part of that storyline, she was like, no, I, I'm really into you, the authentic you of who you are. And I think sometimes that's such as life. We think that we have to put on this mask to be accepted when people are saying, no, let take the mask off and let me see who you truly are. And so that's what the book is about. I love that. We're gonna get a little, we're gonna get into that a little bit more uh, as we go on. But but I wanna um I wanna ask you this now. Um, your writing experience that you've had so far, what has it taught you about you in, in writing these these books? Yeah. So the first one that I wrote and published in 2014, for me to finish that book, I literally had caved myself in for three days to finish it off. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't have any electronic devices on. I didn't have anything on. I needed to finish the book because mm-hmm. I had the, that's the eight step one, and I just needed to finish it. And um, with that book, the process that I took, though, was more so from a let me get down what my main teaching points are and then I would craft what the action steps are and that's actually how I was able to fill out my book that's really my mechanism when I'm writing a book I come up with my main core topics that I want to convey 
Metamorph versus Shadow was a little different because it was more, um, it's personal development is more of a storyline with characters throughout the story. Eight mm -hmm. Steps is more of a teaching how-to book. So it's more functional in that way versus, yeah. so when I wrote each book, I had a different, um, it was a different structure in how I had to use, like Metamorph okay. is Shadow is Destiny and all these characters that she's meeting along the way versus in Eight Steps, it was more so here's your steps on how you can uh, manifest your business model, how you can execute on your goals, how you can execute on your, you know, whatever your mission might be. No, and, and I like that because like you said, I, I do believe that when you have to, when you are a writer, you have to understand the what the purpose of your writing, how, you know, to, to the concept that you have, the vision that you have for it, and then the approach that you have, because a fiction writer is not going to approach writing a book the same way that a nonfiction mm -hmm. writer, you know, and even within the different genres of, of fiction, you're mm -hmm. going to approach it the same way. And even in the nonfiction realm, which you and I in, we don't approach writing each book because each book to me, I, and you tell me if, if this is how it is with you, mm -hmm. each book is like a child, it's, it's individual child. Like you, yeah. when you have, if you have a child, each one is different. So you, it's you, treat, persona. It, you treat it differently. Yeah, <laughs> a whole different persona, personality within themselves, uh, which I think is uh, a great. Now, I want you to, uh, if you can, what made you want to write the, the Metamorphosis Shadow? What, what, what prompted you to say, wow? And then how did you come up with the title? Yeah, so um, the writing the book was actually to help me to close chapters in my life, certain chapters okay. that were still not closed. And okay. by writing the book, was, was it helped me to close chapters that I did not need to live in the past. I did not need to, uh, I, I often use the analogy, like before you go watch a movie, you, you get baited in with the trailer, right? right and sometimes, right. If it, you know, that's how I feel like we are in our life. We're just looping the trailer over and over in mm. our life, but we never make it to the movie part of our life. We never wow. make it to the to, to the main deal, right? And and I look at that as far as when I was writing this book, I needed to get through the trailer of my life so I can get to the matinee of the main wow. movie. And the matinee of the main movie is when you're walking in destiny and you're walking in your purpose. And so for me personally. I needed to get it out. It was a way for me to vent. It was a way for me to release. It was a way for me not to hold things in. And whatever that might mean for, for anyone watching now, watching later, a lot of times when we're dealing with things and we're holding things in, you have to have a way in which you're able to release it. And for me, writing was the best way because I was able to take it and craft it into a story um, so that others can also um, use it to help them along the way. Yeah, and I think you're so right about people getting getting stuck in the trailer of their life and mm -hmm. and not 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 even just getting stuck in there but also not knowing how to get out i think yeah. that's i think that's the big part is is a lot of folks um don't know how to get out and, and in that mm -hmm. yeah yeah no go ahead go ahead well, with what you just said, it kind of goes back to the other question you was asking me, why did I come up with the name Metamorphosis Shadow? Uh -huh. so you just mentioned that sometimes people just get stuck or don't know how to get out. Somebody had asked me the question, why did I even call it Metamorphosis Shadow? Because they said it's kind of like the words contradict you. So that's because Metamorphosis deals with change, right. but shadow right. is kind of hidden. It's more within, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Metamorphosis mm -hmm. is changing. Shadow is kind of the opposite of it. So I said, but that's the whole point. Sometimes we want to change, but the shadows of our past is still looming over Lingling. us. Yeah. So I yeah. called it metamorphosis shadow because while we're trying to change, while we're trying to metamorphosis like a butterfly, right out of the from the caterpillar to the to the uh, the butterfly, sometimes it, it's a transitional phase, and then that's why I call it shadow. That's the second part of it. So mm -hmm. as we're changing, as we're morphing, don't allow those shadows to hold you back as you're changing. Yeah, and I love that. I love that. I love that. And and people need to understand that that we should. To me, you know, I think we should always be constantly and consistently changing. Mm -hmm. um, I know Muhammad Ali said, "If you're the same person at forty that you were at twenty, mm -hmm. you you wasted twenty years of your life." Yeah. You know, and and when we, I think when we go through those metamorphoses, we, we would hope that um, it makes us, to me, 
we should want to be better on the other side of that metamorphosis mm -hmm. um, than we were on on the front side of that going in going into it and everything like that. But nothing's ha nothing happens if you don't if you don't um, go into that change and yeah. if you just stay looking in the shadow, looking at the shadow, and in that Learning. moving forward. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the book? Give give us a um, an overview yeah. of of what that's what it's about, what it entails. Yeah, and I want to read a little excerpt. Um, yeah, absolutely. Is, yep. A uh, little excerpt says, don't wander another second, another minute, another hour, another day, another week, another month, another year on what you could not fix. The past has happened, but the future is still to come. Press in, break through, and be set free. Then it goes on to say, there are people in society with untapped potential that are lying dormant because they have not been able to come to a place of resolve of their past and embrace their present and pursue their purpose. Everyone has the potential of rising above their economic and social status. Now pause right there. This book is about motivating. This book is about really provoking, not just motivating, because people can get motivated, but sometimes they say don't do anything. This book is about provoking a person to want to change, provoking mm. a person that when they feel a mirage, because the mirage is like a shadow, right? It, mm -hmm. it, it's giving you the appearance of something, but that's not always reality. And sometimes we're stuck in the mirage of the shadows of our life and we never get to the place that we change. We never get from the caterpillar to the butterfly. And so this book is allowing a person to see themselves, actually look at themselves in the mirror. This book is very self-reflective. This is not a type of book where it's about pointing the fingers at anyone else. It's about looking within. It's about looking within. And actually there's different parts of the book that says it's even activities for personal development um, that a person can use as they read this book. So it's done in a nonfiction way, but it's also provoking for self-reflection. I like that. And that and and but this is the end this we're heading into the end of 2021. Mm -hmm. And getting ready to go into 2022. Whole new yeah. How important is it for us to, in these last month and a half, two months, or a month and a half that we have left, to do what you said, like that self-reflection, and mm -hmm. then be able to look to what we can be in 2020, 2022? So for me, I always like to take the last two months of the year just, you know, to just reflect. Because a, a lot of times, the, the the all the previous months, it could have been so many things that was going on. And if you don't take that downtime to reflect, you can carry over that same energy into the next year, right? Yep. And, and I think also this is a time to look at teachable moments. Like I look at the course of this year um, and I, I, I look at where, where, where are those moments that I can learn? Like one of the things that I recently started doing months ago, maybe I started it, I think in the month of April, where I go on nature walks. I just get, I have to be around nature. I go to botanical okay. gardens. If I can't get to a botanical garden, I'll just go on a nature walk. And so, you know, maybe that's not for you, but whatever it is for you that you can take some quiet time for yourself, do that. And in that quiet time, identify areas that you want to grow in. And then also I would say to this, have a support group of other individuals that can help provoke you also, right? Like, I think a lot of times with me, I have to also put my, put my goals out there um, and so I can be held accountable because if nobody know what I'm trying to do, I can easily just blow past the goal. Well, nobody yep. know, no, I didn't tell nobody. <laughs> I don't even have to meet the mark, you know? Right. And so I think it's important to have, it doesn't have to be a lot of people, one or two people that, you know, you can share your goals. Listen, this is where I want to grow to. This is where I am. I, I was talking to a group of people, um, last week. Um, I do something called journey back to me and we were all sharing what, our goals are and what we want to manifest. And then after okay. we share what we want to manifest, then we had to get back to reality and say, okay, what are our habits? Are our current habits going to help us manifest that? And then we all started sharing what our current habits are and what we need to change. And so that's accountability. So mm -hmm. I think also when we're talking about self-reflection, make sure you have an accountability partner, whoever that may be. Um, and, and, and somebody said, well, I don't even have an accountability partner. Then pick up a journal, pick up a journal and write. And then read it back to yourself go to the bathroom and read it and look at yourself so because i don't want anyone to feel that you're left behind because somebody may not have an accountability partner right now you can get a journal go to the dollar store write out your goals and look at your own self in the mirror and you hold yourself accountable yeah it, that's so important to have your um 
uh, I call it my book of notes, which is where mm -hmm. I, I, I put things into ideas that I have, any kind of um, when I, if I watch um, videos and I, and I need to take, you know, kind of so that I can um, recall things and be able to write down things that I want for myself or even for my clients and everything like that because mm -hmm. I think that those are good concepts and ideas, but it is important. And then, like you said, you can go, always go back and you, you can reflect on those things that you've learned about yourself, that you've learned. You can say, hey, you can actually also see the progress that you've made too. Because mm -hmm. my, my thing is always, I wanna make people and myself, I wanna make uh, us better by the end of the year than we were at the beginning of the year. That's all, yep. that's all to me, that's always the goal. It's mm -hmm. always the goal every year. I wanna be better. How am I better? by mm -hmm. December than I was in January of, of that particular year. And and one of those great ways, like you said, is by journaling, is by having, mm -hmm. you know, writing it down and, and being mm -hmm. able to um, go back over those things that, that seeing those goals that you wanted uh, mm -hmm. to accomplish or those assignments that you that you gave to yourself or give to yourself. Well, yeah, I did accomplish that or I didn't. And yeah. why didn't I, why didn't I accomplish that? Right. You know, right. Why wasn't that, why didn't that happen? Was there something going on? that kept me from, from, you know, from accomplishing it, or mm -hmm. that it, it gives you a great way to be able to reflect on things and be able to remember things and stuff like that. So that's, that's great. That's great. Now, let me ask you this. Now, what's the, what's the story that you want the readers to come away with um, in reading Metamorphosis Shadow? What do you, after they've read the, after they've read that last word and that last page, what do you want them to come away with from reading the book? with a clear perspective on their identity. Because sometimes, and in, in the book, it talks about identity theft. You know, sometimes we go through life and our identity has been stolen. Not technically, you know, like somebody stealing your wallet or whatever, but your identity, the essence of who you are is stolen. Mm -hmm. The book talks about identity theft. And so at the conclusion of the book, when they read the last sentence, the last word, I want them to have reclaimed their identity. Okay, no, that, that's great, that's great. Now, I asked you earlier about how you came up with the name Metamorphosis mm -hmm. Shadow, right? So now I want to ask you, what does that title mean to you? Um, so I love butterflies. So I know I've talked okay. about butterflies a couple times tonight. So the title, <laughs> it immediately makes me visually see um, a butterfly coming out of a cocoon. That's what I visually see. I visually see... Um, the struggle internally in the cocoon or whatever that struggle is before they burst out and become the beautiful final butterfly because there's stuff that's going on on the inside so what that means to me mm. is before I can get to that butterfly with all the colors and all that I got to deal with the internal first I got to do some shape shifting and, and move some stuff around and and be ready to be stretched because when that Ooh. uh caterpillar is in that whole cocoon and is morphing is shifting it's being stretched also because the wings are being formed and then it's going to be busting out of the cocoon. But here's the thing. It says to me, I got to be willing to be stretched. Am I willing to be stretched? So when I think of metamorphosis shadow, one of the other things outside of just the visual picture is, am I willing to be stretched out of my cocoon? I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Now, can, can you give us um, three keys to getting and navigating through um, one's more metamorphosis and change. Can you talk about that? Um, mm -hmm. For somebody that says, you know what, I'm, I'm in this metamorphosis. How do I, how do I get through it? What, do, what, what is it that, that, like you said, the stretching and, mm -hmm. and the pulling and the pushing, how mm -hmm. does, how, what give, can you give them three, uh, three tips as yeah. to how to, how to manage and navigate through that? The, the first tip, and I noticed it's, it's not going to be a feel good one, but there's a season that you got to get quiet to yourself. There's a season that you can't have a lot around you, whether it be things, people, whatever. You got to get quiet to yourself because a lot of times the reason why identity theft has happened is because we've been around so many people and so many people has been in our ear to try to put in us who we are. So the first step, mm -hmm. you got to get quiet to yourself. You got to retreat. And if you're not able to really go on a retreat, like away, you can retreat in your home, whatever that might be, but you gotta have some quiet time for yourself. Now, what are you doing in that quiet time? In that quiet time, you're literally taking an inventory of your life. You're looking at your life, where you are now, what brought you to where you are right now, um, and eliminating 
and releasing any anger, releasing people. You got it because that's the first step. Because before you can get to anything else, you got to release people. Um, sometimes people are stuck because we're still holding things in our heart. We're still stuck because we haven't been able to let go of anger. We're still stuck because we're not okay with being alone. We're not okay yeah. with being quiet. Yeah. Yeah. We're not okay with that. We're not okay with the quiet room and it's just us. It's just me, myself, and I. That's the first step. So after we've gone through the first step, getting quiet to ourselves, understanding our, our timeline of our life, then the next step is writing down your future story. What do you want to manifest? What do you will to come into your life? Um, and now it's time to start moving from the trailer of your life to the movie phase of your life. And with that being said, that means you have to write it down. And I know this sounds so elementary, but a lot of times if it's not written down, it's not going to happen because we have to have something that we're going to see that we can look forward to. So after you've had quiet time to yourself, you've gone through the lineage of your whole life and the sequence of your life. Now you're talking about this is where I want to go. After you've determined where you want to go, then you want to create those action steps to create the identity of who you truly are. I know one of the things for myself when I was writing this book, every chapter in this book, I was going through different changes in my personal life, every single chapter. And mm. it took me a little long, several years actually to finish this book because I couldn't finish it until I had completed a personal chapter in my life. I couldn't even write a chapter unless I had completed that chapter in my own life. So anyone that gets this book, that reads this book, after you finish a chapter, it was literally after I finished a personal chapter in my life. And so it will be with you. After you finish each chapter in this book, you're going to be closing a door on certain areas. And so once you close those doors on those areas, you're writing a new story. You're creating those action steps because see, now your mind is free. You cannot will something into reality if your mind is full of clutter. It just can't happen. And so I'm in a phase of my life that I am creating the story of my life of what I will it to be, of what I want it to be. Um, but the first step is I had to get quiet. I had to get into myself and I had to release some things. I love that. And, and I love what you were dropping. You dropping some gems tonight, lady. <laughs> I love what you just said. You said you cannot will something to happen if your mind is filled with clutter. Yeah. Because the mind is a powerful thing. I'm telling you, even with my business on my, on my for-profit side, when, uh -huh. you know, when things are, 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 are turbulent on the personal side, it impacts the business side. And I tell you one thing, though, when I'm in a clear zone, I could wake up in the morning, I literally could speak out of my mouth what I want to see manifest for my business. And that day, it happens. I lie to you not, it happens that day. Wow. wow. Now, now, give me one of the ways that you cleared the clutter. Good mind. question. Um, one of the things that I do, uh, well, I love candles. So I'll have candles. I'll have my soft spa music. I create my atmosphere, right? So that's that's important when you're at home or you're at your home office or maybe you're at your office, wherever you are, you have to create your atmosphere to clear the clutter. For me, I like, like I said, I like candles. I love putting on spa music. Um, or if I'm in the morning, I'm trying to get energetic. I'm putting on some energetic music. So I set the tone for my day. So one of the ways to clear the clutter is to set the tone in the morning. Um, mm. Some of you, maybe some people have to exercise first thing in the morning to say, whatever that is, you set the day and don't let nothing stop you from setting the day. Um, and one of the things for me, I have to do my affirmations in the morning, my prayer time in the morning. And I notice if I don't flow with my, my candles, my, my music, my affirmations and prayer, the day is off kilter. Mm. Mm. It really is. And so... I know some of these things may seem um, elementary or fundamental, but if, if it's done in a, it's like a science to it, honestly. And, and, and I share with my, my circle of individuals that I be, I, I'm just, the power of words and intentionality is major because when I start my day off and I'm very clear and it's, the clutter is gone and I speak out and I'm, my mind is in sync and everything, it manifests. And in a short order of time, and I'm telling you, it is so real. When we talk about clearing the clutter, you then will into your space what you want. Yeah, and that's the important part. I think you, you, you hopped on something that I think is very um, crucial into clearing the clutter or, or just clearing the space is being disciplined at it. You talked about doing this uh, on a daily 
it has to become, a, and I'm sure you can probably speak to this, it's become a part of your lifestyle. It's what you, you automatically do. In the, you know, in the morning, you know, hey, if I, if I don't get to this, mm-hmm. my day will not go well. So I right. have to make sure that, that I'm well rested, if that means getting in the bed early so that I get up on time, so that mm-hmm. I have enough time to be able to do those, those affirmations that you talked about and, and all accept the atmosphere for your day, because that is very true, because I, I do, um, I, I do the similar, some of the similar same things where I, I will watch a particular, um, I mean, watch some motivational video mm-hmm. in the morning. Um, I usually try, I may mean, try and watch, um, I know I watch regularly uh, T.D. Jakes in the morning, yeah. 9.30 to 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> that's, that's part of my, of, mm-hmm. of my, of my setting the tone for my day yeah. so that I'm able to have the mindset because mm-hmm. like you said, words and, and our mindset, they are so key to, to us doing the things that we want to accomplish, but then also um, removing uh, the clutter uh, out of our lives because I, I and I talked about this maybe last week with um, a friend of mine we were having a conversation um, but today there's 50 days left mm. in 2021 yeah. there's an expiration date mm-hmm. on some things and some people yeah. that means 1231 they gotta let go you gotta let go of them or mm-hmm. like you were saying you'll wind up taking them into or taking it into 2022 and it's something that doesn't belong in 2022 and it becomes like that shadow that's sitting behind you right now that yes you, that you that's looming that. it's like it's right. looming over you you right. even see how when i grab my yep. hand it can look like it's larger than life right yep it's large. exactly and that's how shadows of our life are sometimes they look larger than life and they want to consume us and that's why we got to be clear and clear the clutter and just stay focused. Can I just read one other little excerpt? No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So this excerpt is from a chapter in a page called A Fortified Mind. It says, to have a fortified mind is to create a barrier of protection around what you allow to enter in and rest on your mind. One must resist any negative influences that will detour and abort the vision coming to pass. And I just want to share it because I think that's a good segue because we're talking about the mindset and clearing the clutter. And a lot of times we abort certain things, our destiny, because we have so many things and negative influences around us. And even in our own mindset, I had uh, did a teaching on the, the um, mindset, right? Dealing with gatekeepers. Um, sometimes we have gatekeeper, mental gatekeepers in our own mindset mm. that will hinder us from moving forward. Sometimes it's not others. Sometimes it's in our mind. And sometimes it's a combination, right? So that's why we also have to watch what we're even taking in on TV. You know, I'm not saying we can't watch news, but we got to be mindful of what we're taking in because all of this shapes our thinking. Yeah, yeah. And, and I remember, always remember me and uh, my best friend, we had a conversation years ago. She's like, you need to watch the news more. I'm like, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. I said, no, I said, I said, I can tell you, and I'm talking about the local news, the, the mm-hmm. national news, you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I watch those. Movies. But I said, and I said, no, I don't. I said, I can tell you the first five stories that are going to be on any news in the in in the after, in the evening. I said mm-hmm. somebody's getting shot, somebody getting killed. There's a fire or there's an accident. I said it's it's nothing but negativity that they mm-hmm. put out those first five stories. I promise you, anybody that's listening to me, watch the news, and I promise you, those first five stories will be nothing but negative stuff that has gone on. There mm-hmm. will be you may get one positive story in the news in that news in that hour news. They'll mm-hmm. give you one. Mm-hmm. Out of all of those, other than you got the weather and the sports that has to take up the other time, but I promise you, those other stories. So you you do have to be very mindful mm-hmm. of what you take in from the news to to the TV show that you watch, even and even the music that we listen to as well too. Yes, yeah. it, it it plays a factor in in us and in, in our mindset. So you're so right. Now, did, had you finished the three um the three keys to navigating through the metamorphosis? Yeah, so the first key, again, you got to get to yourself. You got to get to that quiet space. Um, and that means just being quiet, not having a whole bunch of people around you. It's just you. Um, and in that quiet space, what are you doing? You're writing out the timeline of your life, the sequence of your life. And because sometimes we get stuck in sequences, right, of our life. So when you map it out and see this is what you've gone through in your life. And then the second phase is, okay, you've determined what you've gone through. Now we're going into action mode. Where do you want to go? We've talked about and you've seen where you've been. 
Now we're going into the phase of where do you want to go? And then after you determine where you want to go, then you have to write out your action steps on how you're going to hit those goals. Metamorphosis shadow is not about just wallowing in whatever. Now I am very, but I'm very conscious about you got to deal with stuff. Cause sometimes people are like, well, it happened right. so, so many years ago. Just you're an adult now. Just forget about it. I do not agree with that at all. Because my thing is, if it has never been dealt with, I don't care how old the person is, it has to still be dealt with. Now, once you deal with it and you release from it, then you can fly and you can flourish. But I don't care what an age a person is. If it hasn't been dealt with, it still has to be dealt with. Yeah, but it's not that, it's a book that deals with dealing with the internal because you got to start there. The book does deal with getting within, dealing with all the, the, the nitty gritty of it. But then it also teaches how to move past it. Yeah, yeah, and that's a perfect segue to to this next um, question. Um, where do we go from here? Where does society go? And then, like you said, but then also where does an individual go um, mm -hmm. after they've done that internal um, work? Mm -hmm. they, 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 they've sat down, they've written in a journal, mm -hmm. they, they, they've done their work as, as Elanya Van Zandt has said, <laughs> <laughs> where, where do they go from there? What's what's their next step in that yeah. metamorphosis chain? Well, I would recommend it go back to my eight steps book right here because now there might be some entrepreneurs that want to learn love it. And now you've decluttered, you're one with yourself, you've reclaimed your identity. Now you're clear. Now you need some steps on how to flourish with your business. Because sometimes the business can't flourish if you're not clear. So you declutter. Then maybe someone said, Well, I'm not trying to start a business. But I might be trying to just do a community project, you know, might, might not even be fully a nonprofit, but I just want to do good in my community. Eight steps is still for you. Or maybe you want to do something in your family. Maybe it's an annual family event you want to put together. Eight steps is still for you. So after you've decluttered, you've reclaimed identity, you've come out of the shadows of your past, now you want to flow into the eight steps. The eight steps is transferable, whether you're going to be a business owner, whether you might be trying to put together a family project, whether you might be trying to just do a block project for the, the block you live on. Because now, yeah. once you've become clear and you're focused, you got to go into action. I'm all about action. You can't just be good. Now you got to go out and help someone else. So it's a ripple effect. Actually, in the book, Eight Steps, that's step number eight. It's called the ripple effect. And it talks about duplicating yourself by when you have become in, in self uh, have become one with yourself and you're very clear as to where you are, the ripple effect will happen because now you're going out and you're pouring into other individuals. Just like if you were to throw a rock in water, visualize those ripples. And that's what the ripple effect should be really in life among people in our society. I, I love that. I love that. I love that. Now, how, how, how important is it um, or how important was it for you to tell your story? Because you said Metamorphosis Shadow was about you and, and your story. Mm -hmm. How important um, was it for you to, to tell your story, one, but then also, two, to leave a legacy as mm -hmm. well? How, how important was that to you? I think, well, it was important because um, I had held it in. And again, it's, it's done in a fictional way where the name of the character is Destiny, but I'm Destiny. I'm, I'm, and anyone that's reading the book, you're, you replace destiny with your name, right? So it was important because it was a tool for me to release. It was a tool for me to let things go. It was a tool for me and an outlet, right? For me, I like um, creative things as far as being able to just, you know, free my mind and, and flow. Like actually Metamorphosis Shadow, for anyone that's interested in the audio version, I actually have an audio version of the book. And it's about a 20 minute audio version, music with it, it flows. You could play it in your car whenever you're going or just at home and you're winding down. And it, it, it really brings the book to life in a very theatrical way. So if you have a chance, when you go to metamorphosisshadow.com, you can actually find my SoundCloud page and you can listen to the audio version. Oh, that's awesome. That is, that is awesome to be able to, to, be able to do that. Um, now, what advice would you give to an aspiring author and entrepreneur? Because your, your, your one book deals with entrepreneurship and then the other one deals with uh, being, being an author and both deal with writing the book, but in completing projects, whether it's them as the project or just completing the project in general, um, and then writing a book and then also um, starting a business. What advice would you, would you give them? Yeah, I would say you need to be very clear on what your first goals and objectives are. Here's why I'm saying it. Sometimes I work with an individual and in, in coaching 
and it's a long list of uh, like 10 or 15 different things. Not saying a person can't, you know, facilitate or, 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 or morph into all those things, but in the very beginning phases, you need to be very clear and pick one concept, pick one project, pick one business idea, make sure it's a sure foundation with that. And then things can grow out of it. Like the different things that I'm doing, um, none of this would have manifested, manifested itself um, if I didn't grow. Like I, I was working, you know, just regular before I even started at any entrepreneurship. I didn't step out there being a business owner. I was working somewhere. And, and I always tell people when you're working somewhere, you're learning transferable skills that can be used in your business. So don't despise that day of when you're working at someone else's job, because those are skills you're learning. Take those skills and put that into your goal sheet. Take those skills that you're learning and craft it. Well, this is what I learned here in this experience. And this is what I learned in that experience. And I'm going to take some of these experiences as I start the foundation of my company. So I would say, be very clear on your focus and do not be wide. You know, like with the buffet, you go into a buffet and there's so many options at the buffet. And sometimes <laughs> that's how it is when you're people starting a business. We right. want to do right. all these things. And and you don't even have a foundation yet. So my first step is to tell people, build a foundation, be clear, have a very fixed focus on what you want to do and let it grow from there. Like when I started my nonprofit in 2002, I was, I was young. I was 22 years old. I didn't start my consulting business till five years later, but that was because I had other nonprofit leaders coming to me and asking me for help. So it morphed into that. And then from them asking me for help, it morphed into my book. And then me, as I started to, to get clear with my identity, then Metamorphosis Shadow was born. So it was a succession of growth. Everything didn't just happen all at one time. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, now you mentioned you have, I want you to, to, to tell everyone um, the other things that you go that you got going on. Because as I mentioned, you're not only an entrepreneur, but you're also an entrepreneur. Can you talk about your company and, and what you do and, and everything like that and tell people about the products and services that you offer? Yeah, so CTR Strategy Solutions is the name of my consulting business. And I started that in 2007. Um, my company, we assist startup business owners as well as growing business owners 10 years and under. Um, we assist with strategic planning and organizational development, but also specifically, we help with getting organizations their 501c3 tax exempt status. I've been processing those since 2007, have a very good track record. Every client that I've submitted has gotten their letter of approval from the IRS. On the flip side, I'm also a licensed life insurance broker. So I assist individuals with financial planning from life insurance, index universal life, mortgage protection as well. So I sit down with the family and we go through the whole process, making sure they have a financial plan put together. Um, and then, you know, I host different retreats. I have a business strategy retreat that I host every year. I have a retreat for women called When Queens Meet. And um, the best way to find out about all this information is to go to my website. And it's www.katherinetrotter.com. And that's C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E. Um, and Trotter, T-R-O-T-T-E-R.com. And you can send me an email at ct at katherinetrotter.com. My Instagram is CTR Strategy Solutions and my Facebook is CTR Strategy Solutions. And so again, to sum up what I do on my professional side under my consulting business, again, I am a strategist and I help business owners take the scattered pieces uh, of all those puzzles roaming around in their mind or just some piece of paper sometimes scattered all over the place. And I help bring all that into a cohesive plan so that there can be a clear execution strategy. I love that. I love that. Everything that you that you are about and that you uh, that you do. So, um, what's next for 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 Catherine? You got Metamorphosis Shadow, but yeah. what, what's next for you? What you, what, yeah. what you have going on? Well, as far as book wise, I am going to be coming out with a part two to eight steps. Um, for really? 20, okay. Yeah, I'm going to be coming out with a part two for next year, and then I'm actually working on a training series. Actually, tomorrow night. I am launching a sneak preview of my business development training course of 2022. So I have a new training course called The Shift. And tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on Zoom, I am giving a sneak peek. Um, so if you want to get a little taste of that sneak peek, just send me an email at ct at katherinetrotter.com. We already have a lot of people that have RSVP for tomorrow night. Again, um, my 2022 business development series is called The Shift. And tomorrow night, I'm giving a sneak preview of that. 
I told y'all she a boss, y'all. And that and the first S in boss stands mm -hmm. for shift. You gotta build, organize, shift, and sacrifice. That's well, that's what being that's what being a boss is. So mm -hmm. when you hear people, they don't they folks that be saying they bosses, they don't understand. They don't know what mm -hmm. that means. If you ain't mm -hmm. building, if you're not organized, if you're not shifting and you're not willing to sacrifice, you're not a boss. Yeah. You know, point point blank to me. So mm -hmm. um how can people how can people connect with you, uh, contact yeah. you? Again, you want to give your contact information for people absolutely. to be able to, yeah, to be able to um, reach out to you, to have you come yep, speak. Yeah, absolutely. So um, also I have a link tree. So if you go to link tree and type in CTR strategy solutions, you can pull up all of my links, SoundCloud, uh, my YouTube page, everything's on there, but you can also just go to my website. It's www.katherinetrotter.com. Again, you can email me, ct at katherinetrotter.com, especially if you want to get the link for tomorrow night, the shift, the sneak preview of the 2022 business development training course. Um, Instagram and Facebook is both CTR Strategy Solutions. Um, I would love to connect and work with you. And I, and I love that, y'all, the shift. The shift is going on in 2022. I, I absolutely love that we we shifted in this per, in this in this pandemic that we're in, and now it's time to to shift or to you know, to reshift. Um, mm -hmm. As we, I ain't gonna say it's winding down because it still <laughs> seems like it's going as strong as ever. But but being mm -hmm. able to shift within that, um, mm -hmm. I think is awesome. And 2022 is right around the corner. Like yeah. I said, 50 days left, y'all. 50, mm -hmm. just 50 days left and there's some people and some things that don't need to go with you that can't go with you into 2022 mm -hmm. they got an expiration date of 12 31 21 so that's right you, you can begin now expiration to start date. to move those you know people. how it is if, if you use stuff past this expiration date you yep. know how that is exactly and that's exactly the point because you can know you can't eat it you can and especially something like milk when you smell it oh, yeah. spoiled, you know it smells really bad that's how you want to look at, at these people and these things that you need to get rid of uh, going into 2022 and if, if someone is like that whether it's family or whether it's a friend whether it's a, a business a business associate if it's got to be shifted out if it's got to be moved out that's what you have to do in order to be able to, for you to have the, to get rid of the shadow and go through your metamorphosis. And getting rid of that shadow that's kind of looming. <laughs> expiration exactly. date and exactly. shift. Give it, give it an expiration date. Certainly, certainly, certainly. Well, uh, uh, Captain, I want you to give, um, I want you to talk to the people um, to close this out. Mm -hmm. um, give them some words of encouragement to close 2021 strong, but then give them some current if you can about yeah. that metamorphosis thing going into 2022 yeah i would say if you can um take some time tonight get into a quiet place um whatever that quiet place may be or look like for you and i want you to write down how you're going to close out this year and as you write it down i want you to see yourself in already in 2022. Visualize yourself already in 2022. What are you going to be writing down tonight? I want you to write down your financial goals for 2022. I want you to write down your personal development goals for 2022. For me, I want to, I want to get in the habit of reading a book a month, a new book. So whatever that personal development regimen is for you, I want you to write it down. Whatever your, your retreat locations need to look like, even if it's just going to a park and retreating to walk around a lake or whatever. I want you to write it down. My words of encouragement for you is to go into action. Go into action is no longer being stagnant. I always use an analogy sometimes. Think about water and think about water that's stagnant, that's not flowing. It creates a bad smell. And sometimes that's how it happens in our life. We are stagnant, right? We're, we're, we're not flowing in who we are and we're, we're stagnant. We're not fragrant into the person that we truly are because we're stuck. There's no, there's no flowing water in our life. It, it, it has ceased, right? And so my, my words of encouragement to anyone watching now or anyone watching later is to allow the rivers to start flowing again through you, right? But the first step is to writing down your goals, writing down and seeing yourself. Well, you also, if you haven't done a vision board, and I know that's something 
elementary as well, but it's something powerful in doing it. You can do it by yourself. You don't have to have a whole group. Go to the dollar store and get a board and get some magazines and, and just go to town with creating. My inspirational words to you is to go into action and create the life that you so desire. I like that. I love that. Go into action to create the life that you want. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I'm, I'm going to leave that right there. 50 days, y'all, going mm -hmm. into 2022. Catherine, you know, it is always, uh, it's always a pleasure having conversations with you, um, building with you seeing what the things, the great things that you're doing, how you're impacting people's lives and, and making them better. That's, yeah. that's my thing is always making people better. Uh, yeah. And we make people better by having them, um, showing them that, that it's okay to do the work. Yeah. That when you do, you do the work, you will come out better on the other side. Yeah. And I want to say thanks to you. been an episode yes. of the, no. No, oh, absolutely. Sorry, a little delay. Now go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say to you, thank you for always supporting. I mean, you've been a, 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 a supporter for, for the many years and everything I've done when I, you was in the beginning phases when I kicked off the Speak Life tour. So you know the beginning phases of that and and, and what we're going to be doing next year is going to be phenomenal. We'll talk about that another time. But I just wanted yes. to say thank you. I never want to take a moment and not say that because a lot of times people will pop in and out of your life but yeah. you've been very consistent with your support. And I just want to say thanks. Absolutely. And, and I thank you for the work that you do in, in our community, for our community, and, and about our community. You make it so that our community is better. And, and, I, and I love that about you and, and everything that you do. I know it comes from that space and it mm -hmm. comes from that place. So, um, so thank you as well. Um, this has been another edition, y'all. I told y'all, these conversations are just so rich and, and I enjoy each and every one of them. I enjoy being able to bring these just great minds and these great authors um, to you because they're, they're more than just authors. It's more than just about these books that you, that you see and that you hear. About. And, and as you can tell, it, it, they, they do so much more. And I love being able to talk about what did it have them talk about the other things that they do in addition to the books that they that they bring to us and that's just a, that's just a piece of, of who they are what they do and the impact that they have so um thank y'all for tuning in this has been another episode of the national black community news author showcase y'all can see right there the books are right here the national black unity news you can actually pick up the current issue which she is in. I, let me see if I got it right here. I think I got it right here too. Can y'all see? Can y'all see that? I got it at the bottom. Of it. Oh yes, there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just, okay. So you can go to um, www.tnbun.com and you can um, you can subscribe to the uh, to the newspaper so that you can get it uh, regularly. It's a quarterly newspaper that you get out. This is the last one for this year. We'll have the, the next one will be coming out at the beginning of the year in January. So we hope that you'll be a new subscriber for, uh, for 2022 and going beyond that. We wanna thank y'all again, Captain, thank you. As I say, it's 50 days left. I'm gonna keep saying that every time, 50 days left now. Mm -hmm. and, and 2021 has been about leaving the familiar to elevate your influence. You yeah. cannot, you cannot elevate your influence by being where you are. That means you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Like, yeah. like, like Catherine said, it's going to be some stretching and, mm -hmm. and moving and prodding and, and poking that's going on. But mm -hmm. after all of that is done, you're going to come out looking like that beautiful butterfly that, yes. that Catherine talked about. And, and it's, a, it's, it's changing. It's changes that we go through. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when we come through on the other side of that metamorphosis, there's no more shadow. There's no, no more shadow. of who we use, <laughs> who we use. You to know, be. I think this is, it's so funny. I didn't even realize it's going to be like, this kind of flows with the whole shadow behind me kind of thing with the yep, conversation. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 So I, I thank y'all for, for tuning in. Um, and, and we will talk to you all next time. Uh, my name is Leroy McKee. Kenzie Jr., the Impact Builder, and we will see you all soon.